We are recording, and for starters, if you don't mind, go ahead and give me your name, the spelling of your name, and then the title that you would like to see on the air. Sure. Uh, my name is Joe Payne. I'm the president and CEO of Arcturus Therapeutics. Great. Um, thank you so much. So exciting news coming from a San Diego company involved in making a vaccine for COVID-19. Uh, can you tell us the latest? Uh, absolutely. Well, we've strengthened our relationship with Singapore recently. Uh, they've been a fantastic partner for Arcturus and they've uh, provided us with additional resources so that we can uh, increase our efforts in manufacturing the vaccine uh, to support our efforts there in Singapore and also with uh, potentially other countries. Is there a confirmation? I was hearing that possibly Israel may be involved as well. That's correct. Uh, there's, we have two country partners that are helping not only develop, but manufacture and provide resources for the Arcturus Therapeutics vaccine. Uh, Israel is one of the countries and uh, Singapore is the other. Uh, can you tell me about the vaccine? I mean, there's been a lot of uh, news um, uh, re regarding the other makers in the San Diego in the uh, United States contract. Can you, can you tell us uh, about your vaccine? Yeah, our vaccine is a messenger RNA uh, vaccine, uh, similar to uh, what you've seen other RNA vaccines. Uh, there's only a handful of these that are being developed and, and being evaluated in, in human clinical trials. Arcturus is one of them. We're presently in a phase one slash two clinical trial in Singapore. And uh, the, the early results are interim and preliminary, but promising, and uh, seem to be uh, consistent with what we're seeing with other mRNA vaccines. Uh, the, the, one of the differences of our, our, our vaccine compared to the others in this area is that we're a very low dose vaccine. So our dose level, the amount of vaccine that's injected is low, which means less, uh, it means a more promising safety profile, at least that's what the early uh, clinical data is suggesting, and we hope that continues. Um, and it's, it, it's a vaccine that's, uh, it doesn't have any adjuvants or any viral vectors associated with it. So it, it's a relatively simple vaccine. And for these reasons, it's building a, a more promising and encouraging safety profile. And we'll be continuing to, of course, look at that. Uh, the other aspect that's interesting about our vaccine is uh, it's not a frozen liquid. Uh, we're we intend to develop a, what's called a lyophilized vaccine product. Lyophilization means we remove the water. So it's just a powder remaining and the, the diluent or the, the water is added just prior to uh, injection. So, so this means that there, we don't require any extraordinary temperatures to store the vaccine or ship it, so like minus 80 or minus uh, 60 uh, degree handling or dry ice handling that you may have heard of. Uh, so this provides us unique cold chain advantages in, in terms of distributing the vaccine and the logistics of, of uh, you know, shipping and storing the vaccine. I, I, I know that was a big concern for the, the Pfizer vaccine was the, um, the, you know, the cold temperature that it needs to be kept at and administered from. Um, is there a success rate that you have regarding your vaccine? Yes, the, the early data that we've shown, it is preliminary and it's interim data. So at the last data cut, it's called, we saw 77 of 78 zero convert with IgG binding antibodies. So that's very encouraging. That's a near 100% zero conversion rate uh, at this stage with respect to the binding antibodies. So we're continuing to track this. We plan to report data at, at a later time, of course, and uh, we fully intend to publish it as well. But uh, so far, so good. And like I mentioned, this is a very low dose vaccine too. So the safety profile is encouraging. We didn't see any what are called G2 or G3 fevers, for example. That's a systemic response uh, to a vaccine. We didn't see any of those at the target dose level that we're intending to proceed with. Uh, we also didn't see any what are called injection site reactions or these grade three injection site reactions that sometimes people have been observing with the vaccine. So uh, this lower dose RNA vaccine is looking very encouraging. We're, we're, we're closely tracking it. We're working with Singapore and Israel right now 
uh, to, in hope that we can play a, a key effort in their vaccination strategy for their citizens. Additional countries have expressed interest, of course, uh, and understandably, and we're looking to see if there's a potential to, to play a key role in additional countries. This is very exciting for the San Diego area, you being based here. Would that mean more growth for your company locally and more employment here? Yes, absolutely. I, I think uh, this technology that we've developed is, is, is a platform technology, which means it can be applied to many other disease applications. Messenger RNA is extraordinary, extraordinarily valuable and disruptive. So we, at Arturus, we, we've specialized in the delivery of this RNA vaccine through different routes of administration. And what do I mean by that is you can do an intravenous route of administration or an inhaled it for lung, uh, potential lung therapeutics, and then also injected in the arm. That's intramuscular applications for vaccine. So we have a vaccine franchise, a liver franchise, and a lung franchise. Uh, I know there's many other organs in the body, but those are the three areas that our tourists is specialized at. And there's just so many diseases that can be treated with this uh, unique platform. So we uh, are continually to monitor this in human beings, but if there's a silver lining to this COVID uh, pandemic is that it, all it's done is accelerate the innovation of uh, many, co uh, many companies, including our tourists. Uh, two big pluses that I'm hearing. One is that it doesn't need to be kept at the colder temperature. And, and, and two, does it just mean one dose or would you have to get a second dose uh, it, uh, within the 21 days? Yeah, it, it, that's a great point. I'm glad you asked it. This, the, uh, we're presently evaluating a single administration vaccine and what's called a prime boost. Uh, both have showed encouraging results in our phase one slash two trial. So we fully intend to continue to uh, evaluate them, uh, each of these regimens in subsequent trials. But uh, if, if this works as a single administration, that would be fantastic because there's so many areas of the world, frankly, uh, that it's very difficult, if not impossible in some areas to administer the vaccine in a prime boost regimen. Uh, how do you get people back in for the second administration, right? So, so uh, we're very closely looking at that. And that's applicable everywhere, but there's some areas of the world where it's, it's just not feasible to administer a prime boost. So uh, we want to make sure that this technology is accessible to as many people as possible. And final question, uh, how soon is this ready? Do you foresee this being ready to hit the market? And are you working with the FDA on this? Well, as soon as possible, stating the, uh, the obvious. Uh, everybody that we've talked to, definitely Israel and Singapore and other countries, they're, they're liking what they're seeing. Uh, they want the vaccine. They need the vaccine as soon as possible. So our manufacturing horizon is looking great. Uh, because of the low dose level of our vaccine, it means less manufacturing runs are required to make the millions of doses required. So that's encouraging. We're staying on track there. With respect to approval of these vaccines for, for distribution, um, that's uh, ultimately outside of our control. We're working with multiple regulatory agencies, including the Health Sciences Authority in Singapore, and we've uh, interactions with the FDA here in the United States and, and uh, potentially other uh, regulatory authorities as well globally. And we're intimately working with them in real time. That's the status, that's where we are today. And I think people can appreciate that what the nature of those discussions are. But we, given the fact that we're collecting and uh, phase one slash two data, we wanna move on to that phase two slash three type uh, development and, and those type of discussions are ongoing. Exciting news. Um, anything else you'd like to leave our San Diego viewers with? No, I, just with a, a, an expression of gratitude to the support that we've had from the local community and from our, our local government. They've done an exceptional job with supporting us uh, with respect to our conversations and uh, with the United States uh, different agencies. And then a special thanks to Singapore and Israel who've uh, really taken a forefront lead in providing resources. Uh, Singapore is a country of only 5.3 million people, and they gave us $45 million up front to really help not only Singapore, but many other potential countries with, as we manufacture this max, uh, vaccine. And they've given us additional commitment for additional monies as well. 
so uh, to supply the vaccine. So just a, a, a quick mention to, of gratitude to Israel and Singapore and the local government here in the San Diego that's been supporting us. Joe Payne from Arters, thank you for talking with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. It's good to be with you.